is Edward Rydell. I am the site administrator at Font Hill Castle. Within tile making, um, if you're truly into that art, you know who Henry Mercer is. He had been exposed to tiles um, much earlier in his life through his travels and through some of his studies at Harvard. Mercer's tool uh, collection, his, uh, his collection of early American hand tools, um, is sort of an offshoot of his work, from his work as an archaeologist. And so what he was often doing was trying to find places where you would have found bones and tools together. And so from that point, I think he understands that tools tell you a lot about a people and their past and their history and how they lived their lives. So things that have been used for generations were now beginning to disappear. I think Mercer understood that if these tools ended up in the ground, they would rot away to nothing and this great story would be lost. And so he begins to collect um, at a time when everyone else pretty much thought these things were junk, old historic tools. Um, and he had a very wide definition of what tools uh, were. So by the time he's done, essentially when he dies, he amasses about 30,000 pieces for this American hand tool collection. Most of that collection today is stored and displayed at the Mercer Museum. Um, but what really led him into tile making um, was his interest in German redware pottery. And there had been a number of these potteries in Bucks County in the colonial period, and as part of his early American hand tool collecting, he had collected a number of the tools used for making German redware pottery, uh, and the pots and the results of, that, of those potteries themselves. And he decided that he wanted to save more than just the tools, that there were techniques and processes that he connected with them that he thought were worth saving also. While the clay may not have been good for German redware, it would be good for architectural tile. Uh, and he felt that within the arts and crafts movement, pottery was covered well enough by other artists, but not many people were doing tiles. And so he really devoted his, his interest and his expertise to tile making. The Tile Works was established in 1898 by Mercer, and he used the studio at the family estate down the road from the present building. Mercer got involved in tile making as a result of his work as an archaeologist. During that time, he had collected examples of the Pennsylvania German potters, and he was saddened that the potters and their craft were disappearing. The collection that's displayed at the Tile Works was a, primarily a second collection of the tools and trades pieces that he had been collecting. The numbers on them are simply Mercer's way of cataloging the pieces. I think just about every room in Font Hill has tile in it. Um, and there are lots of different themes that, that Mercer played with. For Mercer, one of the, the great things about tile making was that you could tell a story with tile. It's one of the pieces that really intrigued him. And so a few of the themes that he really explored in his tile making, um, one that he called the New World theme, which were tiles connected with the stories of, of Europeans crossing the Atlantic and, and their arrival in North and South America and what happens because of it. Uh, he also does quite a bit with the Bible. Um, and his other really big theme was the seasons and the change of seasons and activities that occurred within those seasons. Uh, so you see them appearing in lots of different versions of his tiles, be they mosaics or his um, pressed tiles or even his hand-painted tiles. You see these themes reoccurring time and time again. Henry had a, a very good friend, well actually a number of very good friends, um, all canine. Um, Mercer loved dogs, and of uh, the dog breeds, Chesapeake Bay Retrievers were his favorite. It was actually a family connection to the origin of the breed. Um, Mercer's, probably his favorite dog was named Rollo, and Rollo was alive when all three of Mercer's buildings were constructed. So Font Hill, the Tile Works, and uh, what we now call the Mercer Museum. And Rollo's paw prints are in all three of Mercer's buildings. Uh, it was one of his ways of remembering this favorite companion uh, at long after Rollo had died. When the tile works was purchased by the county, we inventoried about 6,000 original molds, plaster molds, that were used by Mercer. Of those, we actually only make copies of those that we now make tiles from, rather than risk damaging the originals. So we've reproduced maybe 500 of the original molds. We currently have five ceramics, but we also have uh, apprentices who come in twice a year. The most prominent installation of Henry Mercer's tiles is the State Capitol in Harrisburg, in which is located 16,000 square feet, plus over 400 of the mosaics. Other prominent spots include the National Press Club in Washington, 
and in many public buildings throughout the United States, including the Gardner Museum in New York, and they were pre previously in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Mercer stands alone during the arts and craft period when decorative tiles were being made, and that most of his operation was truly by hand, rather than by machines as some of the other proponents of the arts and craft tile making industry um, advanced. The Moravian Pottery and Tile Works features its own tile shop in which we offer for sale the very tiles that we make here on premises using Mercer's original techniques and unrefined natural clay. Fond Hill today is a historic house museum. Um, because of the nature of this building, which is very maze-like and organic, and, and we have very few barricades also, the way uh, that most people get to experience this house is on a guided tour. Usually those tours last about an hour, and then throughout the year we offer a series of specialty tours that will either focus on a different part of Mercer's interests, like his interest in ghost stories, or we'll take you to different parts of the house that we don't normally visit on the regular tour. Uh, that one is our behind the scenes tour, and that, for example, will take you into the basement and the crypt and the wine cellar and then all the way to the very top of Font Hill. Mercer dies in 1930, in um, March of 1930. Um, he had been very sick for decades. Uh, and what finally uh, brings about his end, uh, it was a combination of nephritis, which is a urinary tract problem, and myocarditis, which is an enlarged heart. Um, but even though he passes away in 1930, um, there's a couple of areas where Mercer still has a big influence. Uh, of course, in tile making, um, part of the, the advantage of having the tile work still in operation today is they still do apprenticeships there. Uh, you can still get Mercer's tiles uh, from the original tile molds and designs today.